welcome to worship this Ash Wednesday. Compost happens. Food scraps break down and become dirt for the garden. Today, we gather around the truth that we break down too. We hold dirt and ash, reminders of our mortality, our origin in the earth. St. Augustine called our bodies the earth we carry around. And when we die, we nourish the land by returning to dirt. While this image may seem bleak, it is also full of life. God claims what is counted as waste, breaks it down, and enlivens it so it may give life. Rhythms of growth and work in the land need dirt to yield food. Fittingly, we begin this Lent season of returning to baptism and growing in our trust of God in the dirt. May our lives be as nourishing and life-giving now as our bodies will be to the earth when we die. Some of the things you may want to have gathered for this service, a piece of paper to journal or doodle, uh, the Ash Wednesday doodle page, some of you may have, and some dust or dirt uh, from around your house for your own imposition of ashes. Welcome. that won't let go. It stirs in us like the wind stirs leaves, inviting us to move, drawing us forth. When we're quiet, we know that rumble is the Holy Spirit. Dancing love awaken us, 
So we're here and we're still and we're quiet. And on this first day of Lent, we're asking you to draw near. As we hear your scripture read aloud, open the door for us to move. Invite us in, rumble us awake. Gratefully we pray, amen. from Genesis. From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This verse spoken to us when we received the imposition of ashes on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday reminds us of our humanity. So, In full honesty, make a list of five to 10 challenges you're struggling with. Recognizing that life is messy and life is complicated. 
Name anything that is hard or heavy in this moment. Write them down in your journal or on a doodle page and challenge yourself to think of the core emotion underlying each challenge. For example, instead of simply saying, I'm busy, perhaps you might want to confess, I overcommit myself because I worry that other will think I'm selfish if I say no. Name your challenges and your confessions, offering them all to God. Take a moment to look over your list. Ask God for forgiveness for the things you can control. Ask God for grace for the things you cannot. Having read scripture and poetry, named the challenges you are facing, now write down five to 10 hopes you have for this Lenten season. Allow this for, to be encouragement uh, for living your life with intention. You can write your hopes in your journal or on the doodle page or on some piece of paper. And as you write, consider these written hopes to be intentions that you are setting for the six weeks ahead. These are not intended to be aimless wishes on stars, but instead thoughtful intentions for your one wild and precious life.
intimately aware of our humanity and the many ways we fall short or get stuck in the weeds of our own problems. Having confessed and written down some of the challenges that weigh heavily on us, here is a poem by Sarah R. as a reminder of God's grace. I like to imagine that each year, God invites me to a party. God drops me a note that says, no gifts, casual dress, come just as you are. I like to imagine that I'm a brave enough to go. I like to imagine that I decide I am worth it. This was no pity invite. There is no obligatory postage. God wants me there. So I get myself together, smudged glasses, sensitive ego, wrinkled shirt and all. I ring the doorbell a few minutes late on account of the fact that I lost my keys twice trying to get out of the door. And I almost turn back to hide in my car, afraid that I might embarrass myself over appetizers or small talk. But then God answers the door and God says, you're here. And I smile because I am. And with every step past that threshold, I know that God is cheering me on. It's the pride of a parent watching their child take their first step. If I freeze, God is not disappointed. If I fall, God is not mad. But if I trust the invitation, if I move closer, I know God celebrates. Friends, you've got mail. It's an invitation to dust off your shoes, to go deeper, to trust that you're worth it, to lose your keys and your faith, and then to find them both along with your worth. You are invited. We are invited again and again and again. This invitation is for you. Gospel is from Matthew. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In Lent, we're reminded that again and again, suffering and brokenness find us. We doubt again. We lament again. We mess up again. Again and again. The story of Jesus on the cross repeats. Every time lives are taken unjustly, every time the powerful choose corruption and violence, every time people forget how to love. With frustration, we 
shout again? How long, oh God? And yet in the midst of the chaos of our lives, God offers a sacred refrain. I choose you. I love you. I will lead you to repair. Again and again, God breaks the cycle and offers a new way forward. Again and again. This theme will provide a clear invitation this season when so much is unclear. Even while worshiping apart, we come to God again and again with our prayers, our dreams, our hopes, and our doubts. Even while we're at a distance, we will continue to be community to one another, especially when it's hard, by choosing each other over and over again. We will try to love God with the same persistence God chooses and claims us. Again and again, a Lenten refrain. A Lenten refrain speaks to the ways God can make music of our lives. Refrain also reminds us that Lent is a time of abstaining from certain or harmful practices in order to take on new rhythms and habits. In this season, we need rituals, both old and new, to remember and be transformed. Embodied practices build muscle memory. Repetition helps retain our neural pathways. Today, we compost, we let go of and turn over the scraps of life to God through the wonders of creation, including worms and microbes, our scraps become something new, life-giving soil. Today we find dust and ash and remember, we are earth, we are stardust, we are compostable, life is short. Today we remember that where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. The way we use our time and money matters, not just because of the impact they can have on others, but because of the way that our investments move our hearts, souls, life, spirit. Where we give is where we will watch, wait, and pay attention. If we disinvest, we stop caring. That's maybe a particular concern as we mark one year of COVID life this season. How do we keep investing in one another, in community, in God's dreams for us and all creation, even when we feel so isolated, separated, disconnected, dissatisfied. When remembering God and one another with faithfulness may be more challenging than ever. Again and again, God calls and invites us to show up for one another, to invest ourselves in places and spaces where we want hearts to open and come alive. We need the 40 days of Lent because this season shapes us into more faithful disciples. Join us this Lent again and again as we bring all of who we are to God and trust that God will meet us time and again along the way.
Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a dis discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads our way. Resist whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by our gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. This year, we have to remember in creative ways, maybe with soil, maybe with dust lying under a bed, soot from a candle or a washable marker, but however we remember this year, we remember together with the whole church, gathered and scattered, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. created us out of the dust of the earth, may these bits of dust and soil be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our hope in the midst of despair our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying towards baptism, and call us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jumbatsu, Salam. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you.
Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we praise and glorify, worship and adore you. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourish the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you bless your people and cherish them as your own, that we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You call to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection which renews the face of the earth. We wait for Christ's coming when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, Send upon us and these meals your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share holy food from home to home, table to table. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our prayer, our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy and fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love. We feast forever with you, O God, O living one, now and forever. Amen. 
Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Now, if you're gathered with others, when the music begins, please share with one another first the bread and then the cup with the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you. If you're by yourself, I offer this invitation. Receive the body of Christ given for you. Receive the blood of Christ poured out for you. And if for any reason you will not receive communion bread and cup today, a blessing for you. May God fill you up with the Holy Spirit and give you all that you need.
thought of open doors, open arms, and open conversations, we know deep in our souls that you are forever inviting us in. Again and again, you invite us to take another step closer, another step deeper, another step further in this journey of faith. So with your invitation in our hands, we pray for strength and wisdom. Show us the next right step in this journey. We are here. You are here. This is holy ground. May this holy Lenten journey of days begin once again. Gracefully, we pray. Amen. Now, a blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.